Se você acredita que você tem fé, você vai subir esse prédio aí, sem nada, você vai subir. Charles Oliveira is one of the most promising young stars. Lightweight champion of the world. Charles Oliveira, from nothing to UFC champion. There's no denying that in 2024, Brazil's Charles Oliveira is one of the UFC's most widely loved fighters. The top lightweight contender has had a number of classic bouts inside the octagon and is preparing to make another run at the belt he once proudly held. But few know just how hard of a road Oliveira had along the path to the pinnacle of the MMA world. Today we're going to take a look back at the improbable odds that Brazil's pride and joy had to overcome in order to be eventual UFC champion and top contender. From the slums of Brazil to the peak of the fighting world, this is the story of Charles Oliveira. Let's get into it. Today, Charles is one of the most recognizable athletes in the world of MMA. Known for his humble heart, the tattoos of his children, and his masterful jiu-jitsu, many consider Oliveira as one of, if not their favorite UFC contender. However, as a child, if you were to have asked him if he could see that future for himself, Charles would have likely laughed in your face. Growing up in the favelas of Sao Paulo, Oliveira's family had next to nothing, living in extreme poverty. On top of that, at the age of just 7 years old, Charles was diagnosed with both rheumatic fever and a heart murmur, leading Brazilian physicians to impose a sports ban on the young child. Fortunately for the young child, his parents decided to allow him to compete in sports against the doctor's advice. De reumatismo e problema de sopro. O médico falou que ele não ia poder mais jogar nenhum um futebol. And Oliveira's condition eventually healed on its own over time. When he was just 12 years old, he began taking free jiu-jitsu classes from a local trainer and immediately fell in love with the sport. After just two months of dedicated training, Charles became the jiu-jitsu champion of Sao Paulo, and it was clear that he had an immaculate gift. By 2006, Oliveira had captured a second championship, a world champ trophy, and 16 additional medals. His successful rise was making waves across Brazil, and in 2007, after he became a two-time CBJJE world champion, he was awarded a purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He earned his brown belt just a year later when he won the 2008 CBJJE South American Championship. Soon after, he began to transition his career to focus more on MMA. He began booking fights in bunches. He quickly amassed a 12-0 record, including 5 submissions and 6 knockouts, with some of the wins even coming in multiples on the same night. It was clear that the mastery of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was transitioning to the world of MMA seamlessly. And soon, he signed to the Predator Fight Championship in 2008. He debuted at the Predator FC9 Welterweight Grand Prix, where he won three fights in the same night, winning the tournament in his professional debut. Over the next two years, he saw his record improve to a stunning 12-0, with the majority of his fights ending in the first round. He was simply too explosive, too skilled for the competition of the local promotions. After easily running through the top competition in Brazil, Charles got the call from the one and only UFC and made his professional UFC debut in August of 2010 in the lightweight division. Primeiramente eu falei que ia melhorar em tudo. Pô, meu jiu-jitsu cada vez mais sempre mais ágil, indo para cima. Pô, tô treinando muito Muay Thai, muito boxe, a parte do MMA, então graças a Deus tá dando resultado. From the very start, his early UFC career was the epitome of up and down. He started out his career by winning his first two bouts against Darren Elkins and Efrain Escudero, respectively, both by submission. Both submissions won submission of the night, and his ascent to stardom continued to appear it would go unrivaled. However, his third UFC fight against veteran Jim Miller did not go his way, and Oliveira was submitted via a knee bar in the first round. 
and for the next seven years that would be the story of the Brazilian's career. A no contest against Nick Lentz followed by a defeat to Cowboy Cerrone then another two fight win streak followed by losses to UFC all-stars Cub Swanson and Frankie Edgar. Up and down, it seemed that Charles simply could not put a run of continued success together. Even after he went on a four fight win streak from 2014 to 2015, his momentum came crashing down in one fell swoop when Max Holloway injured Oliveira in the first round causing him to have to end the fight early. It wasn't as if the talent wasn't clearly visible. During the four fight win streak, Charles won two performances of the night a fight of the night against Nick Lentz in a rematch and submission of the year for his absolutely wild anaconda choke to defeat Hatsu Hiyoki at UFC Fight Night June 28, 2014. But the issue remained, he simply could not keep the streaks along long enough to reach contender status. That would all change after a 2017 defeat to Paul Felder, something inside Charles clicked. And he had enough of failing among the mid tiers of the lightweight and featherweight divisions. He was ready to make a run, and make a run did he ever. At UFC 225 in 2018, Charles had his first chance to start a new run to the belt against Clay Guida, which he won via guillotine choke in the first round and was rewarded performance of the night. Up next, he faced off against Christos Giagos just three months later. During the fight, which he won via rear naked choke, he set a new UFC record for the most wins by submission at 11 and also won performance of the night. Charles was hitting another gear, and the results were speaking for themselves. If what he had shown so far was to be trusted, this was the point in the cycle where fans would expect Dubronx to drop a fight, undoing all of the good work he had previously built up. But that never happened. In fact, he went on one of the most impressive runs and arguably the most competitive division in all of combat sports over the next four years. He beat Jim Miller in a rematch via a first round rear naked choke and then David Tamer via an anaconda choke in his next two bouts and earned two more performance of the night bonuses in the process. In his third fight against Nick Lentz in May of 2019, he earned a TKO victory in front of his hometown Sao Paulo crowd. Then, after a third round guillotine submission of Kevin Lee in March of 2020, right before the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, the discussion around Charles being in a title fight began to stir. It was clear he was only one or two fights away and the Brazilian who had came from nothing could smell his dreams growing even closer. Next, he faced off against former interim champion and fellow fan favorite Tony Ferguson as the co-main event of UFC 256. In a fight that saw both fighters do damage, Dubronx ended up winning via anonymous decision, Oliveira was ready to fight for the title. On May 15, 2021, Charles faced off against newly signed UFC contender Michael Chandler for the vacant UFC lightweight championship. After a wild first round that saw both fighters get rocked, Charles came out for blood in the second and won the belt via a TKO. He had finished the improbable journey from poverty-ridden favelas of Brazil to the height of the fighting world, but his journey was far from over. Up next, he'd have his chance to defend the belt against top contender Dustin Poirier, who was coming off two victories of Conor McGregor. Dubronx, now a solidified fan favorite, was heavily favored by the crowd and delivered a beautiful second round rear naked choke to defend and retain the belt. However, after missing weight prior to his next bout against Justin Gagey, he vacated the belt even though he defeated Gagey in the first round via a rear naked choke. Charles was devastated and vowed to return soon to reclaim what he felt was rightfully his. He'd get that chance in his next fight against the deadly Islam Makachev, the heir apparent to Khabib at UFC 280 in Abu Dhabi. 
While Charles had his moments in the first round, the master grappling of Islam was able to overcome in the second, defeating Oliveta via an arm triangle to secure the belt back to Dagestan. Charles was again devastated and vowed to return to reclaim the belt soon. And that is where Charles currently stands. He defeated Benel Dariush at UFC 289 with relative ease in the first round in June of 2023 via TKO and immediately conveyed interest in a rematch with still champion Islam. However, with Oliveta wanting to stay active and Islam taking part in Ramadan, in early 2024, Charles booked his next fight against number 4 ranked Armand Sarukian for the upcoming Megacard UFC 300 in April of 2024. Common Sense says the winner of that fight will earn dibs for the next shot at Islam and you can bet that Charles will come out looking to make quick work of the Armenian. Only time will tell if Oliveta is able to reclaim the belt that he fought so hard to obtain, but regardless of if he is able to or not, there is no denying the obstacles that he has already been able to overcome to find the ultimate success in the world of fighting. It has been nothing short of incredible, from being born into the most dire of circumstances to holding UFC gold. There are few fighters in the history of combat sports as resilient as Brazil's Charles Du Bronx Oliveira. Until next time, let me know in the comments who you think wins in the upcoming UFC 300 fight and if you think either has a chance at beating Islam in the next fight for the lightweight belt. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. This channel is all things MMA. I also document my Jiu Jitsu journey on here. So make sure you hit that sub button and hopefully I see you on the next one.